I say we get off easy. I didn't ask you. Now get back to work. What a catch. I'm sick of accidents. I'm also sick of guard duty, crowded birds, lousy chow, and your ugly face. Maybe you like to do something about it. You just said the magic word. Abracadabra. I, I mean, hello, and welcome to the General's Reviews. I'm Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80 from the Full Force Podcast, and I'm joining Justin Bell from What's On Joe Mind and General's Joe's to bring you this review of the Hasbro G.I. Joe 2 pack, Heavy Duty and Stiletto. Before Justin takes a look at the figures, let's go into the history of the characters from their first appearances through to now. Let's start with the man whose codename sounds like a rather large visit to the toilet. Heavy Duty, and because he has a much more depthier depthiness of depth. Anyway, we first get Lamont A. Morris in 1991, and when I say we, I mean the United States. The UK and Europe also got him just a year later. His figure was a pretty cool design, and felt like that particular year's roadblock interpretation. As well as adding to the ever-growing roster of important black characters in the G.I. Joe universe, both had a mean tash, opted for the sleeveless look, was the new heavy machine gunner or heavy ordnance trooper, and the musician, which links very loosely to Roblox's love of rhyme in the cartoon. But they don't drop. There ain't no way to make them stop. That's where the similarities ended with this version of Heavy Duty, and where many older characters have been killed off in the comic to allow for new players with similar specialties to take over, Roblox remained a major character, and now the Joes just had a seriously impressive heavy weapons team. He saw a lot of joy in the Deke cartoon, appearing in the opening titles and in numerous episodes in both series 1 and 2. Shoot forward using a heavy weapon, and we find ourselves in 1993 and the Star Brigade. Heavy Duty version 2 was given the future upgrade that we have come to expect from this subteam, with oversized bodies and ridiculous designs. Classic arm cannon. In 1998, we get a repaint of version 1 to go along with the Mobat and version 1 Thunderwing for the Real American Hero collection line before he gets a complete redesign and build for G.I. Joe vs. Cobra in 2002 in a two pack with claws and then again with Skullbuster. The design went with the bulky, burly, muscular body with a more standard military look. Gone with the ripped sleeves and baseball cap, replaced with a full-on tactical uniform and bandana. The same build gets two more repaints in the same year, one with the brawler and another pack with claws version 2. We get yet another redesign in 2003 for the spy troops, packed with heavy water because after a heavy duty, you need to flush the resulting heavy water. And once again he gets two repaints to follow, both in 2004 for the Valor vs Venom line, one with razor claw and one single carded. Along with the toys, Heavy Duty also gets a big showing in the Spy Troops CGI animated feature in 2003 and the Valor vs Venom sequel in 2004 that resembled the new design of the toy down to those weird silver wrist gauntlets and the bandana. They also made him a relative of Roblox and added Chef to his list of specialties, making the food in his own ridiculous way. I very rarely include Sigma-6 in these history breakdowns, mainly due to the fact I've only covered Duke and the Bats in previous videos, and they had enough to talk about, but for Heavy Duty, you can't really ignore it. He was prevalent in the animation and had two figure versions that continued a similar theme from his Spy Troops and Valor vs Venom designs. The first figure appeared in 2005 to coincide with the animation, and the second came out the following year. Both versions were original builds, with the first one getting a removable bandana, and the second having it sculpted to his head. They were loaded with accessories, and his specialty was artillery expert, having a plasma cannon and a flame blaster respectively. I really liked the line and thought the play features were spectacular. The cartoon was fun, but I get the idea a lot of Joe fans aren't totally down with that Japanese style of art and anime. Philistines. Who's Phil Isteins? Now we get to 2009 and a sack full of rancid bum scrapings that was Rise of Cobra. As a movie anyway. Just for goodness sake, what were they thinking? When all else fails, we don't. As a toy line however, we got some pretty neat figs. For some strange reason they changed Heavy Duty's file name for this one. Don't ask me why, probably because it wasn't British enough. Oh yeah, they changed his place of birth also. You may have blackmailed your way onto this team. Doesn't mean I've got to like it. But it does mean I've got to get your mission ready. Joe style. Standing in front of you, a Delta 6 accelerator suits. What's it accelerate? You. It'll make you run faster, jump higher and hit harder than any of your enemies. Let's suit up. 
Anyway, he's now known as Herschel Dalton and has the head sculpt resembling the actor Adewale Akinoye Agbaje. Adewale Akinoye Agbaje. I have no doubt butchered the man's name, and I apologize for that wholeheartedly. The figure is cool and resembles the actor perfectly, even down to the bigger build. His weapons are ridiculous though, and I feel like there's a compensation being had for something here. Either way, a cool figure, and a shame that it's sullied by that pile of w of a film. I mean, come on. In the same year we get the reactive impact armor version and this time his weapon is just plain cool. Big but not stupid and definitely one of my favorite accessories from the Joe line. The third and final movie duty, <laughs> the third and final movie duty was a repaint of the version 10 first movie duty and was packed in the G.I. Joe vs Cobra set that also included Duke version 37, Mars Industries weapons officer and a version 10 Neo Viper. Finally we get version 13 and that is what Justin will be looking at today so I will leave it at that and only say he has kept his new name of Herschel Dalton which actually really bugs me. Anyway, Stiletto. The winner of the Kindle Worlds fan choice that featured four characters, Troy Osgood's Blackjack, Jim Beard's Marcus, Bill Nedro's Stiletto and our very own Justin Bell's Whisper was open to the online public and even though Justin didn't get the win, it was a cool process to participate in. Bill Nedro won the vote and Stiletto is the character that Hasbro made for this two-pack. We've been seeing a lot of this fan voting from Hasbro, most recently with Transformers and the Trypticon Titan, and a new vote that will choose the next Prime. I for one enjoy the process and the hype that is generated by these kinds of fan interactions. I was a huge fan of the crossword puzzle that gave fans an opportunity to try and crack the code of the roster of figures in the newest lineup, and I personally hope we see more of these interactive features and competitions in the future. Anyway, enough of me, let Justin show you the newest member of the Joe roster. Hey there, how you doing? This is Justin from GeneralsJoes.com with another Generals Joe and Tell review. This time we're looking at the new, brand spanking new, uh, G.I. Joe 2016 uh, toy line. I have already uh, done a quick review of both uh, Duke and Tombstone, and today we're going to be taking a look at Stiletto and Heavy Duty. Now here is Stiletto first. Uh, I'm not reviewing the packaging this time around because I think we've all seen it at this point. Uh, it's pretty much the same packaging, same blue two-pack um, design that we've been seeing since 2014 now. Um, but we're seeing some interesting twists here in 2016 with the addition of some really cool new characters. Uh, we already looked at Tombstone, which is a cool new Cobra character. And now we're looking at Stiletto, who is a new um, questionable allegiance character, I guess you could say. According to her file card, which I have right here. According to her file card, she is firmly a member of G.I. Joe. Uh, she defected along with Felix Mercer Stratton, acting as his bodyguard, and has since become a strong asset to the G.I. Joe team. Skills that hint at special forces training, proficient in most small arms weapons, and an expert in the use of bladed weapons. Now, um, well, here's the catch. Uh, as folks, I think, are aware, Stiletto was based on a character in a Kindle Worlds uh, novella, or a series of novellas or novels by Bill Nedro, and he actually portrayed her as a Cobra character. I mean, there was a level of, of defection that went along there, but she was actually kind of a double-slash-triple agent. So, um, interestingly, Hasbro did not seem to go with that mindset and made her strictly a member of G.I. Joe. I'm not really sure why that is. Um, I don't know if Bill has any idea on that or wants to shed any light on that at some point, but uh, that's, that's the gist of Stiletto from a toy line perspective, which is interesting. Um, but anyway... There is the figure. Um, the most remarkable f feature about the figure is um, no doubt the new head sculpt. Anytime there's new tooling on these figures, it gets some attention. And um, this new head is pretty good. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of complaints from folks um, for whatever reason. You know, the stupid complaints like, oh, she doesn't look pretty enough. Well, yeah, it's a female figure. And she doesn't have to look pretty. She's a, she's a badass. It's the, really the most important thing. Um, you can see she's got a little faint scar uh, along her left eye, although you can still kind of see a faintly painted pupil in there, which, um, you know, is, is okay, I guess. It'd be cool, I think, if she didn't have that uh, pu uh, pupil. I think that's kind of how Bill originally designed her. She's got some pretty cool white and black, black stripes through her hair. Um, very interesting that, uh, I guess, Scarred Faces is kind of the, um, the nomenclature for operatives, for the, for the new characters this time around. Both Tombstone and Stiletto have these 
um, freaky scarred faces. But you got kind of to get a look at her head sculpt from 360 degrees here. It's a decent head sculpt. It's not one of the best I've seen from Hasbro, but it's not too bad. It does the job well, and it's a cool new character, which is good. Uh, you can see her body parts from the neck down are pretty much all reused. Uh, it looks like, I, I, well, she's got Agent Helix's torso, uh, and then it looks like, I believe, G.I. Joe Resolute Scarlet legs, um, I think. Uh, but they might have also been Helix legs. I guess those legs are similar, but uh, in some ways they're a little bit different. But she's got, um, I think it's it's Lady J arms, which is okay, except they don't have the best range of motion. Um, you can kind of, you know, really push them tight and they bend, but it's it can be a challenge sometimes to, to, to uh, fully bend them. But uh, it works okay. And both arms kind of have the same range of motion. It's kind of what, where if you just pose them kind of normally, they don't bend as much as you'd like. But if you really give them a little oomph, they will bend more. But, um, you know, I'm not sure what kind of strain I'm putting on her joints there. Now she comes with a very cool um, removable backpack with two swords in it. Stiletto in, in Nedro's novels is a uh, knife expert, uh, an expert in bladed weapons. So... This version of the figure, you know, obviously a name like Stiletto, you would you would think she's got a uh, proclivity towards using edge weapons, and she certainly does. There's a couple swords. Um, I really like these swords. I, um, they are from uh, Damned, if I can remember, one of the various Storm Shadows or Snake Eyes that exists in the world. Um, and I like them. I like the hilts are kind of flat and not so ornate, with that little kind of triangle tip on the end is pretty cool. Uh, I think this, this gun is from uh, Retaliation Snake Eyes. She's got the familiar Druganov sniper rifle um, with some brown and black deco, which is neat. She's got these um, the two like bladed knives that have come again with a number of different figures. I'm I'm horrible with accessories, especially because the same accessories have been used for so many different figures at this point. Um, this pistol, I believe, came with the Geo Retaliation Trooper. Um, it's neat because it's got the little kind of knife triangular knife blade near the tip of the barrel. Um, she's a she's a cool figure. If you look at her paint deco, um, it's a little out there. Uh, you know, the I, I I applaud Hasbro for doing some different color schemes. Um, too often we kind of get caught in the cobra blue, cobra red, cobra black um, color scheme, and GI Joe is all gray and and green and brown and black. But um, here at least they've they've mixed things up a little bit. She's got obviously her black boots and knee pads. Really nice shade of green for the pants. Um, and then she's got a really cool purple armor set on. If I have any complaints, it's that the colors don't really jive well together. It's like somebody said, well, let's pick a bunch of different colors and throw it on this figure and make her look neat. And it does look neat, but um, but I know, you know, knowing a lot of um, kind of professional toy designers, a lot of work goes into color matching. Um, there's a lot more to making a figure look cool than just slapping a bunch of different colors on them. You, you can you know, really study Pantones and figure out complementary colors and which colors, um, you know, that may be different shades, still look nice together and, and make sense. And um, still, Edo's color pattern looks cool, but I'm not sure the, you know, where the purple color breaks are. Uh, I'm, I'm having a hard time wrapping, around, wrapping my head around how the material folds like that and where the different different breaks are and stuff beyond the fact that, oh, it's it's neat to see purple there. You kind of see the purple vest kind of connecting around, around the edge, but then we've got this black here that I'm not really sure where that belongs. I do like the kind of silver deco on her uh, abdomen armor. Um, she's a cool looking figure. You know, it's, it's um, very, you know, I'm, I don't know how many people watching this video kind of know the history of the fan vote. Um, Stiletto was a character chosen by a vote from, um, G.I. Joe fans that Hasbro held uh, for Kindle World's characters. Full disclosure, my character Whisper was part of that fan vote as well. She unfortunately did not win. Um, she lost to Stiletto, but, you know, in spite of that, I'm trying to do a fair and biased review and not be bitter. Um, but anyway, there's Stiletto with her swords. She holds the swords pretty well. She's decently articulated, you know, and she's using those uh, Rise of Cobra parts and Resolute parts, which always had some great articulation. That was one of the benefits to those, so... She's a, a fun-looking figure. You know, she um, isn't 100% perfect. They've got some issues with the colors. They've got some issues with the kind of somewhat soft detailing on the on the face. Um, the paint apps on the eye is not fantastic. But overall, 
no, not much to complain about. Overall, she they, they did a pretty good job with her. And, you know, she's a new character, which is always nice to see. So that is Stiletto. Um, she was sold with a two-pack alongside Heavy Duty. So Heavy Duty is who we are going to take a look at next. G.I. Joe will return after these messages. All right, and General's Joe and Tell is back with a look at Heavy Duty. And it's amazing how things kind of come full circle. Uh, Heavy Duty was a character who first uh, arrived in 1991... Um, he was kind of a heavy ordnance trooper who came with this big ass awesome double Gatling gun rocket launcher contraption that strapped around his waist. Um, was a classical music buff, um, but wasn't really, you know, wasn't necessarily a heavy machine gunner. wasn't meant as a replacement for anybody. He was just a cool new character. And then, you know, in the early 2000s, for whatever reason, you know, the the copyright or trademark or whatever for Roadblock lapsed, and Heavy Duty kind of became a Roadblock clone, where to the point where he was actually written in as his cousin, who took his, you know, in the Devil's Due comics, who kind of took um, Roadblock's position on the team. Uh, they even, I think, especially in the Sigma-6 universe, kind of wrote him as, um, I don't know if they wrote him as a chef like Roadblock was, or in some of those um, CGI animated series from the 2000s, but he, he was clearly meant to be a replacement for Roadblock due to copyright trademark restrictions up until about 2004-2005, when um, when they actually got the trademark for Roadblock back, he did a, well. He appeared in Roadblock appeared in Spy Troops in 2003, but didn't do a whole lot. Uh, he appeared in the Spy Troops toy line, but Heavy Duty was still clearly his replacement all the way up through Sigma Six and so on. And it wasn't until recently, you know, with the GI Joe Retaliation film, that Roadblock really fully made his return to the mainstream. Um, and then he also kind of appeared in the GI Joe Renegades animated series, GI Joe Resolute all that sort of stuff. Uh, and now here we go with Heavy Duty once again kind of making an appearance, although he hasn't had any figures at all in the modern format unless you count his Rise of Cobra versions. Um, but he's he's essentially made from a roadblock figure, so now it's kind of come full circle and now you've got a Heavy Duty who was created using parts from the aforementioned Retaliation roadblock. And you can see like Stiletto, like Tombstone, he's got a new sculpted head uh, with a cool bandana. I don't know if that's kind of an homage to his Sigma-6 appearance or not, but whatever it is, it looks pretty cool. The figure itself is mostly, I believe, um, G.I. Joe Retaliation Roadblock, the Battle Kata Roadblock, uh, which I'm fine with. That is a fantastic figure. It's a very large figure, so it kind of suits Heavy Duty's larger stature. Uh, he's got kind of a, an off-white colored shirt there, um, uh, the vest from the G.I. Joe Resolute version of Roadblock in black, um, the legs are very much the retaliation roadblock, obviously. Um, it's pretty clear. Uh, they're very uniquely identifiable legs. Uh, he's even got the belt with little holders for the battle kata um, weapons that uh, do not come included with the figure. Uh, Heavy Duty is a figure that it looked like they kind of threw the kitchen sink at him. He's, uh, he comes with all sorts of different accessories. He's got this G.I. Joe Resolute roadblock heavy machine gun. He has got this smaller portable M249 um, that Pursuit of Cobra Duke originally came with. Of course, he's got the badass M2 Browning that uh, is, is the original Roadblock signature weapon. He's got a machine gun belt here. He's essentially got more weapons than he could ever realistically carry. Um, so, you know, I, I, I have mixed emotions on stuff like that. I mean, in, in some cases, I like it when they give him a lot of accessories. In other cases, it's kind of like, you know, why would you give him so much gear that he can't even carry it all? Um, it makes it feel like the gear is not very unique to him. It's just kind of like he raided an armory and um, took what he wanted. Oh, and he also comes with also this uh, removable pistol in his holster and removable knife in a little ankle sheath down there. All, all trademarks of the original G.I. Joe Retaliation version of the figure. Um, as, as a figure goes, it's really cool. I mean, the, the figure sculpted for the G.I. Joe Retaliation line were all sculpted with a perfect marriage of kind of detail work and articulation. What, say whatever you want about the Retaliation movie and kind of more modern toys, but they really had design for G.I. Joe figures down to a science at this point, where they're able to make this figure kind of bulky, very detailed with the wrinkled straps, um, with the kind of the muscular veins in his arms, but they were still able to retain this crazy level of range of motion and articulation to the point where, you know, his, his arm can clearly move it almost a 90 degree angle. Um, sometimes you gotta kinda flip them around, but I mean, it's it's pretty impressive how far those elbows can bend and get into nice uh, gun firing poses and stuff like that. He's also got these really cool uh, anti-cobra 
tattoos on his arm as an homage to the vintage version. Heavy Duty back in the day also came with those. Also had those little tattoos decoed on his arm. So that's a nice touch as well. Uh, his color scheme is kind of, it's different. It's not really much like the, um, I mean, the other Heavy Duty kind of had an off-white shirt, but a little bit of a different shade of off-white shirt than this. The, the pants look pretty similar. I mean, overall, it's, it's certainly an update to that version. He doesn't have his mustache like the original Heavy Duty did or anything like that. But really, from a figure uh, design and construction perspective, it doesn't get a whole lot better. I mean, like I said, I'm a big fan of the G.I. Joe Retaliation era of action figures, um, even if people do have issues with the movies, which, you know, you know I, didn't, I didn't mind the G.I. Joe Retaliation movie. It had its problems, but it wasn't terrible. Um, but the, the figures we got in association with that, as long as you don't count, like, the, the five points of articulation vehicle drivers we got, any of the fully articulated figures... And even some of the ones like uh, <clears throat> Zartan and the original Cobra Commander, who may not have had absolute full range of motion like these later figures did, still have some really cool detailing and sculpt work and, and good articulation where it counts. Uh, so here is Heavy Duty. Heavy Duty is actually so far my favorite figure of the four figures I've checked out for um, this 2016 G.I. Joe toy line. He has got um, great size, great detailing, he comes with a ton of weapons. A somewhat unique look. He's not totally and completely married to the vintage version, but he's got some nice throwbacks to the vintage version. Uh, he's he's just a really neat looking figure that I really enjoy, and I think Hasbro did a good job with. The color scheme kind of complements itself nicely. Um, but anyway, it's interesting that with the two new characters, Tombstone and, and Stiletto, characters that I would normally latch onto being new, kind of new blood for the G.I. Joe universe, the figure I am really enjoying the most is this version of Heavy Duty. Um, we should take a look at his file card too. We can take a quick peek. Um, I mean, they do uh, they do reference kind of his vintage uh, look where they talk about him being a classical guitarist, um, you know, his Herschel Dalton file name. They don't mention him being Roadblock's cousin or anything like that here. So uh, he certainly is more vintage inspired on the file card as opposed to the character as it evolved in the uh, 2000s. Uh, but he's a great looking figure. I really like him a lot. I enjoy the fact that Hasbro is getting some of these somewhat obscure figures out there. I know there's a lot of people that would rather have seen him with a you know, backwards baseball cap um, or what have you, but all told, this two-pack was pretty fun. It, they did a pretty decent job on it. I like it a little bit better than the Duke versus Tombstone two-pack. Some new blood, some great new looks, and uh, thank you very much for watching the uh, Generals Joe's and uh, Generals Joe's Joe and Tell. This is Justin from GeneralsJoe's.com. If you liked what you saw, please like the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. If you didn't like what you saw, if there's stuff I could improve, please leave a comment down below and tell me what I could do better, and I'd love to try to do it better. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Big thanks to Chris McLeod uh, and Diagnox with Katie from the Full Force Podcast for his help putting this all together. And uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching this review by Justin Bell of GeneralsJoes.com and What's on Joe Mind, and from myself, Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic80 from The Full Force. If you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and let us know what you think on any of our numerous social networking platforms. Goodbye, and see you next time for another Generals Review.